You know, you just got to pick your self up by the bootstraps and say, okay, I'm not laying down anymore. I'm just not giving, I'm just so over being exhausted with my own BS. You know, I mean, that, and that's where I make big changes where I'm just like, I'm over me saying this stuff to the point where now it's either do it or shut up. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Nathan Marco, and this is Hold Strong. Now, today, what I'm going to talk about is just feeling like lost. If that's you, I don't care if you're 19, 18 years old, or if you're 60 years old, it doesn't matter. If you're having that issue, we're going to handle that today in today's podcast. So let's just get right into it. Now, feeling lost can come to you at any point. When you're 17, 18, 19, when I was that young, I was just like, you know, now, by the way, explicit language comes in my podcast in case you're wondering but I was lost like I didn't know what the hell I was gonna do I really didn't know I didn't know where I was gonna go I didn't know what I was gonna do for a job but I didn't care I was 18 right so I was just like whatever um, <clears throat> for those of you who don't know I graduated high school uh, like a year and a half early and I had no plans on going to college I was like this is not gonna happen for me I'm not interested in college I don't want a degree anywhere I feel like it's a waste of time and everybody I read about that was already like mega wealthy it college degrees didn't do it for him. So um, I didn't care. Anyways, to the lost point. Uh, I don't think I started feeling lost till I was probably in my, and I want to say a couple different points in my life because no matter where you're at, uh, I want this to mean something to you. So um, I don't think me personally, because I don't want to lie to you, I don't think me personally felt lost until I was probably, oh, I think the first time I really felt like something was a little off, I was probably 24. 23, 24, because I had seen my friends get out of high school and they already went to college for a couple of years or they were in like their career for three or four years and they were already making like journeyman scale. Where I was from in Illinois originally, we have unions, right? So um, up there, I think the union started you off at maybe like 10, 11, 15 bucks, I don't know, per hour. But by the time you had gotten a journeyman scale, you know, three, four years in, you're making in the 30s. So whether that's if you're a machine operator or whatever, you know, it may have been in the 40s. I don't remember now. But uh, like when you're making that kind of money and we're still kids, that was like hard for me because I didn't, like I wasn't doing anything yet. I had an online business. I was, I had a little eBay store online. Well, there was no such thing as an eBay store back then. So I, I had an eBay, I don't know, channel or whatever you want to call it, an account, I guess. And I had a zillion things on there. And uh, I was pedaling, God knows what, everything from RC cars to Louis Vuitton purses and stuff. And uh, I was making a decent living, probably about a thousand bucks a week. But in comparison to my friends, like I had no security, um, which that's kind of like a fallacy anyways. But, you know, I, I didn't have, I had to find product all the time. So to kind of like encompass my part of my life there, I needed to have something to put me together. And uh, I seen everybody else having jobs, stability, getting houses, getting cars, not having to find inventory. Like, you know, if you run a business right now in your life, if you're watching this and you have a business or want to run a business or just starting a business or failing a business, it doesn't matter. Um, all that's kind of relevant, you know, um, uh, rev or relevant. So, yeah, I, I just was kind of envious of the things they did, you know, and envious of all the stuff they had and kind of how on lockdown their life looked. Now, I could come and go as I pleased at that point. I never missed any, you know, weekends on the river because we lived right next to the Illinois River. I never missed any, like, you know, uh, any events, any birthdays, holidays. It didn't matter. I missed, you no know, 4th of July. I missed nothing. You know, but the sacrifice at the time was uh, I don't make what you guys make. You know, I can't just work extra hours and crank in the extra money, or at least that's so I felt. So <clears throat> I just want you guys to know that, you know, I got my life together and I don't want to say together, but, um, there was like multiple times. That was one. And the second time, uh, maybe two other times. And the second time where I was a little lost was, I was probably 30 coming up on 30. You know, you're starting, I think a lot of people have that problem right around that age. And you're just like, you know, what am I doing? You know, I've got the last 10 years down, you know, I didn't realize growing up would happen this fast. And here I am at an age that when I was 20, I thought 30 was like old man age. You know, I'm just like, wow, I'm, I'm ancient. And, but the thing was, like, it's not. Looking back now, it's like, wow, that was so young. You know, I'd, I'd love to go back to 30 right now. Um, but when you're at 30, you're just like, Ooh, I don't want to age anymore. I don't, like, I really don't feel like I got shit together. And there was probably more 
of a prevalent issue to me at 30 than it ever was at 23, 24. 23, 24 was like, hey, I got time. I can figure stuff out. <clears throat> I just saw everyone kind of doing some things and getting things in order. And I felt like I really wasn't, my life kind of is a turbulence of, <laughs> is, is, a, is chaos, you know, a little bit. And uh, I'll get more of that in a minute. But that, that's kind of like my internal qualms in life. I, I, I'm like a tornado of I don't know what to do, you know. <clears throat> and uh, so at 30, I think I kind of reflected more as an adult for the first time in my life and look back and say, am I really, have I done what I really wanted to do? Am I where I want to be going? Do I know a direction? Do I have a target of where I'd like to be? <clears throat> and uh, because I didn't, you know, I kind of felt like, you know, this is the time, you know, like it's kind of now or never. I'm 30 now. Like I get it that I didn't know what I was doing at 23, 24, but I was having fun. And I kind of let that, I was so passive about that, I think, that by the time I'd hit 30, it was like, like, I really got to figure stuff out now. You know, like that was all good and fun, but now it's like, I shouldn't have wasted as much time as I did. I should have got my shit together at 24, 25 when I had the first revelation and like had a, a better grasp on things. But you're a kid, you know, you don't, even though you're not a kid, you're technically still, you don't have enough life experience to know that you're not going to live forever. Even though you say the words, the meaning of what that means isn't as powerful to you at, at 25. So at 30, it starts to mean something. You're like, I'm in a whole new category of humans. Like now I'm a legit adult, you know, like I'm a grown man. So when people ask what I did for a living or what I was doing, you know, at 30, I was still kind of figuring it out. You know, I was still online. I was buying and selling. Um, I'm trying to remember what I was even doing at exactly 30 years old. Oh, I know exactly what I was doing. I had just opened up my first successful uh, warehouse where I was buying liquidated products way before they do it today. I did it way before it was cool to do. Uh, I was going to, to Best Buy and um, Walmart and uh, Home Depot, all these companies, and I was buying their products that were going out of either, they were changing like product lines. So if, if Kohler or any company would change or a vacuum line, like, you know, whatever, you know, whatever company was changing their vacuums, LG or whoever it was. And let's say they had like a vacuum that was like a four or $500 vacuum, but they're changing their vacuum line to a whole new design. They need to eradicate the vacuums they have and they don't put them on sale. What they do is they just dump them off to, to distribution centers and they liquidate them out. That way the store doesn't see, you know, the consumer doesn't see their vacuum going off on sale for half price. So I was doing all that, and I had a really successful year, um, my 30th year of being alive. Uh, so it was my, my, one of my biggest peaks of my life. And then also at the end of that year, I went through a, a terrible breakup, um, a five-year-long relationship that went down the drain. I thought I had my life together. At the same time, I just got everything together, everything went backwards. Um, you know, I was making maybe seven to 10,000 bucks a week. And I was only working three days a week uh, in that warehouse, just liquidating product. And that was with no advertising, no marketing. Like literally what I was doing was just that big of a deal. And for the first time in my life, I really thought I had a bunch of stuff together. Like I really thought that, I don't know, I just thought that I was doing stuff right. You know, I felt like I was finally figuring it out. You know, a decade in, I'm just now getting the hands on it. And I really thought, dude, like I was going so good, so well, I thought that I was really going to make it. Like I thought that was the first time in my life that I believed millionaire status was like 100% a viable option for me within the next like six months to a year. And uh, just because I was accelerating my income so fast, you know, I, it was went from like from like a thousand bucks a week to 2000 to 7000 to like, I think I did 12 and then 14,000 in a week. And it was just like, and this is, I'm talking like three days. I haven't changed anything. I haven't marketed anything. I haven't advertised what, what I did at that point yet. Like that was just organically people coming in and just and just word of mouth. Like it was going to be huge. <clears throat> At the same time that summer, um, I went through a breakup uh, that was unforeseen. Uh, literally went to sleep without getting into major detail. I went to sleep at night um, and saw her and, you know, told her I'd see her in the morning. No fighting or nothing going on. I wake up and she's gone with everything. And I get a call in the morning at nine o'clock, the bank telling me that, she had wiped out my bank account. And I walked into my store and my safe was wide open and everything was gone. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> so they actually froze my account uh, at like 4.16 in the morning. And it was already at negative like $25.73 or something along those lines. <clears throat> so here I am all the way backwards, tons of bills, you know, million dollar warehouse, inventory, three cars sitting outside, Plymouth Prowler, big diesel lifted truck, you know, Lincoln Navigator, brand new Mustang, all this stuff, three cell phones, and all my money gone, everything stolen on my warehouse, and not a way to pay for it. Pretty awesome. <clears throat> so without getting into details on that, I just want you to know, <clears throat> I tell you that to tell you this, that even at that point when I had everything I thought squared away, I had to do a major reset that year. I had to sell the warehouse. <clears throat> I liquidated what inventory was left to keep myself from going bankrupt. Um, I never missed a payment. Never got late on a payment or nothing, uh, believe it or not. I was able to move things pretty quickly with urgency, <laughs> which wasn't hard to do. And then, uh, you know, it was lost again. Uh, and the reason you might say, well, why didn't you just keep it going? I couldn't because all, a bunch of the merchandise was gone. And I didn't have the money at that time to rebuy it again to stock it back up. So I just had a bunch of bills that were that needed to be paid. And with the little inventory I had left, I had to liquidate that to just get by and not go into bankruptcy. So uh, I knew I could do it again just down the road. Just right then and there, I had to I had to cut ties. You know, I, I waited out for like two, three, four weeks, you know, and just talked to everybody that worked for me at the time and worked with me. And that was just the best option for me to do. Um, so anyways, I had to restart from scratch again and go back to work, get a labor job in the union hall and, and go back to being a laborer, which was like so far from what I wanted to do. But, uh, so that was me starting over again at 30. Um, so then I, I met, which was going to be my wife and we had to literally start from scratch at 30 years old. I had not get to get up. I lived in my mom's house for the first month or two. And, uh, then, then my wife, well, she was my girlfriend at the time. She wasn't going to have it. So, I had to have my own place. <clears throat> I guess you can't be an adult uh, in, in your mom's house. So got my own place and everything. And because um, uh, it was it was that or she was leaving, I'm pretty sure. So I, I, I did that. And it was a small, you know, kind of crappy apartment, two bedroom. We had no furniture, uh, only a blow up mattress, uh, had beanbag chairs for chairs. And that is this is all true story. I'm not exaggerating any part of this. <clears throat> um, I had a fold out table for my table, for my hobbies that I could do like any work on or anything. And that was it. I had a computer, didn't even have a TV. I had a computer um, with a bigger monitor that I put on the floor in my living room and we would sit in the beanbag chairs and just watch things through my computer. And um, and that's what I'd end up doing. Um, it's weird saying this stuff out loud because I, I don't think I've ever talked in detail about this before. And you know, just to think that my wife didn't leave me during that point, because like I'm a 30, here I am a 30 year old guy, you know, living in an apartment that's like, I don't even know, maybe 800 bucks a month. And I have no furniture. I can't even afford to put us out of bed. <clears throat> you know, so <clears throat> that was tough. That was just tough. And, uh, so that, that's why I'm married to her now, because uh, looking back at that was just, that was powerful. That was <clears throat> a tough part of my life. So anyways, uh, I just want to, I want to tell you that, you know, no matter where you're at and what you're going through, you know, and, and no matter the age, like you can start over because I look where I am now and what we have now and what we're able to do now. And, you know, I'm so grateful and uh, just, just so grateful and the gratitude I have for her and like what we're doing and what we're able to do. And, um, it's just amazing, man. Like, and, and, and I would have never foreseen that in those moments. I felt like that was it. I didn't see a way out. So if you're at that point in your life, if you're ever going through these things that are similar to mine or your own version of this, <clears throat> you know, just know that, you know, you're, you, 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 I understand what it's like to sit there and not see any options. Everyone's like, oh, when one door shuts, another one opens. But I know the feeling of looking around and not knowing, I don't even see any doors. 
right? So like not only can one not close, I, there's none even to open. Like all I see is a hallway and this is all I feel like this is the only option I got is just to walk straight, you know? And, and it's, it's, it feels like I'm going a direction you don't even want to go. So I totally, totally wholeheartedly understand that, you know? Um, so, and that was 30. <clears throat> so we, uh, we worked through it and fast forward again uh, the next and final time that I probably, you know, kind of felt like, you know, I don't know what's going on uh, or I kind of feel not a smidge lost, maybe not lost, just, um, you know, you always kind of wonder, are you doing everything you're made to do, you're built to do? And, you know, probably in the last couple of years, uh, that's been another final chapter for me where I'm just, but the thing is, is now that I'm, I'm, I'm just turned 40 this year is that the great things about that is like, now I'm like certain that I'm okay with being lost. If that makes sense. Like I'm certain that this is a consistent consensus pattern of thought process for, I think everybody. So, you know, understanding that as early as you can and being okay with it as early as I could would have probably excelled what I can do and what I was capable of doing and what I was meant to do, where I was going to go, my end destination, you know, knowing that stuff as early as I could. And now that I know it now, and now I'm certain, I am so certain you can ask anyone that works with me that, that I have no fear. Like, do you think that I have any fear of, of, of failing or moving forward? Do you think? No. None. I mean, like, would you wholeheartedly say that, that there's no fear? No, on, no. Or either direction? If I went either direction, am I comfortable with both ways, you think? Yeah, you've told me that a billion times. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's not just what I'm saying. This is not a fallacy. It's not, I'm just not trying to create motivational content. I'm truly telling you that, like, I, if I lost everything tomorrow and it's not from a point of perspective where I'm at now where I say I have all these great things so I can't visualize what it's like to not have them, I very, very strongly can envision where I was and now that I'm certain that I'm okay with both, because I've had great things, guys. I really have. I've had amazing cars, amazing homes. I mean, homes where I couldn't even, like, over 7,000 square feet, where I can't even fill all the bedrooms. Nine bedrooms, six bathrooms. Like, I've had some monstrosity homes. And I rent some phenomenal mansions to this day for my team and even just for my close family when I want them to travel and travel right and, and help them experience things they haven't done. But literally in the same year, literally in the same 30 days of each other, I've slept in a tent uh, this year um, in, in a key with no heat, no grocery, no running water, no nothing, voluntarily, and loved it. You know, loved it. And literally, I think it was, I think it was three weeks prior to that, I was staying in a mansion in Scottsdale. You know, that was, you know, a couple, two, three thousand bucks a night, and I was out there for five days. So, like, I don't carry the direction which way I go. Like, I'm just as happy both ways. So I'm just going to here to give everything I've got and help you guys as much as you guys want me to, as much as you guys can resonate with me, as much as I can give back where I feel like there's, there's some sort of valid reason for me to do this until I just don't feel like it's there anymore. And if that dr runs me into poverty, like, I'm okay with that. So what I'm saying is it's okay to feel uncertain where you're at uh, no matter where you're at and just being lost, you know, you just got to pick your fucking self up by the bootstraps and say, okay, I'm not laying down anymore. I'm just not giving, I'm just so over being exhausted with my own BS. You know, I'm so tired of telling my story to everyone about why I can't do something, or I'm so tired of telling my dream to all these people of what I'm going to do someday and just never doing it. I'm tired of repeating that exact same BS that to the same people or people that have heard it and around and their friends now, I'm just like over and over. It just gets mundane and monotonous. And I'm like, I'm just tired of my own shit. You know, I mean, that, and that's where I make big changes where I'm just like, I'm over me saying this stuff to the point where now it's either do it or shut up, you know? And, and it's, it's hard to, to, to have that reality check with yourself. But you know what? You got to stop making excuses for why you're where you're at. You got to stop being reasonable and you got to stop 
I guess, negotiating with yourself and making all these these fantasy reasons why shit just ain't working out for you. <clears throat> you know, you need to to stop being okay with with being comfortable. Stop making sense of just getting by. Stop making, you know what, because what they do, what people do, and you can research the studies on this, when people do is when they feel as if they're too nervous that they can't make it or they're too nervous of failure, what they'll do is they'll start using excuses in their own story to themselves. They'll start saying things like, I didn't really want to go there anyways. I didn't, you know, I didn't really, I wouldn't have want, I wouldn't want to be my own boss. Oh my God, the pressure from all that. I don't want to have a bunch of employees. I don't want to make a bunch of money. I'm okay with living with family. I, I didn't really want to even live there. Now I'm thinking about it. Like you come up with all these make believe excuses later in life when, when like you're, you're, you're just making sense of being average. You're making, cause you're capable of more than that. Your potential is like a thousand times more than that. And I'm not just saying this. You guys need to understand that your potential is is so ridiculous. I've watched people that should be baggers, you know, at a grocery store uh, when you first meet them. That that is really their potential status of what they've treated themselves. And I'm not saying it's what you, how good you are, or your value. That's the valuation that you've given yourself. So you just you you know you uh, I guess submit. To, to life and society and where you're at and what you've been taught and you're just a bagger at a grocery store or you are just a person that sells cell phones for Verizon. And there's nothing wrong with those things. There's nothing that, but you need to know that that is not the end. That's not even the middle. That's not even 10% in of what you can do. I've watched people that should not be where they're at, be multimillionaires, and you just sit there and wonder in awe. And what he's done is just told himself, I'm moving forward. I'm going to collect more. I'm going to keep inviting people in. I'm going to keep doing more for others until it does for me. You just watch these people that just have drive on top of drive on top of drive. And that's all they're doing. They're not even massively intelligent. All they've done is said, look, I'm going to start researching people that want to be, that are at where I want to be. I'm going to start replicating that on a baby scale because I can't do it big. I'm going to do it at the version I can. And I'm not going to stop or give up or give in until I'm dead. And these guys are like machines and girls and everything. So you watch these people that just don't turn it off. And you come back to them in a year and you come back to them in two years and they are scaled up every time they don't. And it's like weird. Their life gets better and better. And you're just like, all I did was make excuses back then. All I did was made fun of that guy. I just talked trash about him. Oh my God, look at this idiot putting posts up again. And look at this idiot talking about his business. Why does he think he's going to be something? Look how stupid his video looks. He's in a sweatshirt in his living room. Oh my God, I can't believe this guy thinks he's going to make it. I got made fun of at, at you know about three, four years ago at this later point in my life when I was already successful by a guy that had a hard time accepting that I was successful to the point that his the only way he could make fun of me was like, oh, he said, I remember you when you were 17. And you're walking around with a briefcase thinking you were somebody back then. That's all you are today. And I thought to myself, how small and weak-minded is that person that he's looking back at a guy that's 17 years old that doesn't know. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't even know a direction to go. But I knew I wanted to be somebody so bad that I was willing to, to act like it. Act like it to the point where I didn't know how to do anything more. And the only thing I knew back then, I mean, I'm an older guy, so 20 years ago was to carry a briefcase. Important people must carry briefcases. Important people have cell phones back then. You know, they were more of an expensive item to have. You know, important people dressed nice. I just tried to do the best I could. Did I have a business that required that? Absolutely not, I didn't. But it didn't mean that's not what I wanted for my future. I wanted to start acting like that guy so I could maybe be that guy someday. I really wanted to be somebody important. I wanted to. I felt like I was meant for that. I was meant to help. I was meant to, to produce. I was meant to drive forward. I just felt it inside that I was not supposed to be in a store, in a business for somebody else, that I wasn't supposed to lay down and do as told. I just, I, it was inside me. And I didn't know if that meant I had to be broke or I was going to be rich. I just knew that I didn't, I was not going to submit to life's generalities. You know, I didn't want to consume the average, the plague of being average, you know, the mediocrity, the, you know, it's like, it's like a pandemic, you know, being lower class and middle class is a friggin' pandemic. Like you don't have to be these things. Do I think you should be ashamed of them? You don't have to be if you don't want more, but then I would look at yourself and say, why don't you want more? 
if you are capable of doing more, I would ask you, if you're watching this right now and you're like, no, I'm good where I'm at, I'm content where I'm at, and I say, do you think you could get more out of life? Do you really believe you could do and be more for your children? You could do more for your church. You could do more for yourself. You could make more money if you wanted to really commit yourself and not watch Netflix and you wanted to really learn a product or a, a process or a talent. If you really want to put in ridiculous amount of time and not watch the game and don't go to the bar and all these things, would you be a more productive and better and financially gained human being? And if you say, yeah, I could do those things and I do believe I could, I could produce more, then I guess my question to you at that point would be, why don't you? If you know you can be better for your family and you can give more, a better life, more vacations, why don't you? It's selfish. It's selfish. And you may say, well, I just want to be selfish. Well, yeah, good for you. Good for you, but majority of you, I don't think want that. Majority of you are probably going to listen to this and turn on yourself and say, you know what, damn it. I am more valuable than that. My family does need me more than that. I can provide a better lifestyle than that. Why am I not? Why am I not? Without making no BS excuses about all these obstacles in the way, a real superhuman is going to get out there and say, look, I know there's going to be a bunch of landmarks that I got to fight through. I'm accepting the shit's going to be tough. Not that it's going to be easy, that I just got to learn a few things and it should all work out when it don't. I guess it's just not meant for me. That's not what it is, except there's going to be a nightmare. It's going to be, but anything worth fighting for is a fight. You don't ever get great things that just get laid down in front of you. I, you know, you know, I mean, the only, life isn't a scratch off. It's not a lotto ticket, but being alive is. You're lucky. You got a one in like four trillion chance of just being a human and not being a friggin' tree. So do something with it. Don't just exist. You know, it's, but it's okay. I don't care what age you are. I don't care how lost you feel. You can change it. You can turn it around. I went one, one, there's was like six month pattern. I did this a couple times in my life. One month I did, I was done like 500 bucks. And the very next month I was up to 55,000 in savings. I did that once in my life. And then another time in my life, um, I had a marketing company. I still have one today, but it was a, a lead generation company I was in business with. And we were doing, I want to say, we went from almost no production, very minimal. I'm, I made a couple thousand dollars. And within two months, we were consistently producing almost $100,000 months. I mean, that's ridiculous. And it was in a couple months. I didn't have a big budget. It was just me and one other guy and ended up being two other guys. And we were going to split what we had in the beginning. Like we, they, we didn't, couldn't afford a team. And like within two months, it, it grew. I think the second month in gross, we might've done, I think in January of that year, we might've been between like, maybe in gross, maybe between 30 and 60,000, maybe 30, 40,000, 50,000, somewhere in there. And then the next month we did like, I think, 80,000 or something like that. So like, it, it, and that's for just that month. So I, had I been scared three months prior, I wouldn't even have tried that. And I can tell you that during that journey, while I was, while I was working on building that business with my partner at the time, I was telling myself, I don't know if this is going to work. I don't know if we can do this. But I've, I, I'm telling you right now that if we don't do it, I'm going to look back and see other companies that didn't do and be successful and think, you know what? We probably could have done that. We'd be rich by now. I'm not going to be that Bitcoin investor that could have bought it for 20 bucks. And now that it's 40,000 for Bitcoin or 10,000, whatever it is, 20,000, where I could have been a multimillionaire off $20. I'm not going to be that guy. So I'm just going to run this through. I'm going to convince myself that I'm a train that can't be turned off. And just if it works, it does. And if it doesn't, it's not going to be because of me. It will not be because I gave up. If we fail, it's because it's not the right time or because I didn't have enough intelligence maybe. But I'm running through, I'm reading everything, I'm learning everything, I'm turning my life around. So if you're in that position, if you're nervous, if you're lost, if you're scared, I don't care what age you are, there's nothing wrong with that. You're allowed to feel a little bit lost. You're allowed to, to get yourself back together. And I can tell you right now, regardless of what age you are, you could turn that around and be somebody super important. I mean, you look over, even like the guy that did uh, the Colonel Sanders, the Kentucky Fried Chicken, I don't even think he made it until he was like 65. Like that's, that's so far down the line. So, and then he grew from there forward. I don't think um, Warren Buffett, you know, a billionaire, 
didn't even have his gross net value until he was like like 55 or 60 years old. He was a baby millionaire until like just in his late years. So you don't have to be somebody right now, but you are somebody inside. You Your potential of what you can do is far more superior than what you're giving. What you're doing right now is you're probably being lazy. You've been complacent. Well, whatever years you're alive, you've got that down already being lazy. So now it's time to turn it around. You need to set a schedule and start putting things you have to do every single day and get out there and start doing these things. I don't care if it's five minutes a day. Start being productive and then add to that as the weeks go on. When you can hold that schedule of five minutes a day, seven days a week, then maybe after week two, you're getting used to it, add another five-minute segment or stretch that one to 10 and I'll make it 10 minutes every single day. And I promise you, you put enough good things in. I promise you, I promise you, your income will slowly start getting going up. Your value will start to raise. Your sights on what you think you can do will grow. So keep moving forward. Don't let up. <clears throat> Anyways, guys, I'm sorry this ran so long. I'm over 30 minutes now. I like to keep these short, but I, it was, I'm very passionate about this, this one particular thing. I've done it multiple times in my life, and I had no one to tell me that it's okay to feel that way. So I just wanted to share it with you guys. If you do feel that way, regardless of what age you are, it is a-okay to be like that. It does not mean you're not meant for success. It does not mean you're not meant to grow. It does not mean you're stupid by any stretch of the imagination. It just means you're creative. You're just trying to figure things out, and you just haven't hit what you wanted to hit. So just keep trucking, keep adding things to it, and start to grow up more and more every day until you get where you want to be. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. It's been over a half hour. I will see you guys next week at the same time every Wednesday. Stop in and see me here at Hold Strong. Again, I'm your host, Nathan Marco.